What you don't know can hurt you, and what you do know can set you free. That's why we interview subject matter experts for your small to medium-sized business and personal finances, because knowledge is power, but experience is everything. Welcome to The Tipping Point. The Tipping Point is brought to you in part by Tehrani and Velez LLP, your tax and accounting subject matter experts. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Gabriel Velez. Our guest today is Sean Azad, president of Search Engine Projects, an Orange County-based online marketing, marketing company. Search Engine Projects is a digital marketing firm that offers lead generation services using online presence to efficiently gain new customers. They work primarily with small and medium-sized businesses. Hey, welcome to the show, Sean. How's well, it going? Thank you, Gabe. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for being on. So, um, so let, let's kick it off. Let's talk about what is search engine opti- optimization and why is it so important? Great. Uh, let me tell you about what my company is doing. And as a part of the services, I will explain what is a search engine optimization is. Um, Search engine projects, the digital marketing, our job is to basically provide a solution for small to mid-sized company. They have an issue about their online presence, means that their website is not fully optimized or it doesn't show on their mobile or they don't have a right position on search engine such as Google. A search engine optimization, basically, it means that you make sure all the content, title, tag, it's ready for search engines, your website, for basically reposition their website based on a keywords or a location that you are looking for. Um, that's basically, that's what is a search engine optimization is. But that's a one portion of the whatever we do. We basically evaluate their website speed. We check their content, make sure it's relevant to the clients. We check their call to action, means the website, there is a right phone number, all the form is working. So it's basically we do the A to Z when it's come to positioning a website through internet. Okay, so search engine optimization really has to do with uh, lead generation via the internet and mostly focused on the website and Correct. and being able, being searchable. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, so that's one thing. But you're, you're talking about, uh, coming in and having a cohesive marketing strategy, which is everything from your message to actually how you you Correct. follow through on the message. Yeah, Correct. basically, people or clients come to us and they have a question about building a website or positioning of the website. But what we do, we evaluate their entire platform. We mm-hmm. ask, start asking question or basically investigate what they're doing, who is their customer, where this customer coming from, uh, whom do they compete with. And we grab all those information and then we go to the first meeting and we investigate, okay, uh, your website, it doesn't follow your business model. Your website doesn't have a position or your competitor, they have a better sending a message to their to your customer and their customer. So we basically, we forensically evaluate their website, their competitor website, and we come with a suggestion about content, call to action. If they want ask us to build a website, we give them a whole detail about how you how to generate a lead and how to make their potential visitors interest to your services. So that makes us a different from the web design company. A web design company basically build a website for you. Mm-hmm. It's on your criteria, your color, your request. Ours is basically we build a website for your customer yeah and you pay for it <laughs> <laughs> um well that's awesome so okay let, let's talk about search first and um you know obviously the biggest search engine being being google but there are other ones there's y- sure. yahoo and bing and right. um what is the basic strategy for getting uh, more leads on search and being um y- right. being able to be found yeah um you have to do some homework before you approaching your position, your website to the Google, Bing, or Yahoo. Usually, your content should be relevant. Your pictures, etc., 
name. You have to have a right name tag for all the picture name convention. You have to have a right URL. But from people that they do not understand or they are not familiar with this terminology, um, your website should be user friendly. Your website should be shows on the mobile, should be fast. Yeah. Uh, Google basically changed those matrix of the equation that how to position a website. Um, but some of them is well known, something like uh, if you have a proper relevant backlinking from the quality website, mm -hmm. if your content it's more than 500 words and it's people, they really like it when they're landing to your page, people, they do not bounce right, they read the content. And honestly, if you have a quality content, uh, people, if they like your content, Google somehow understand and then reposition your website compared to the competitive that they just have a sales tagline is I'm the best, I'm number one. People, they get tired of that. But if you have a answer their question, you have a right blogs, you have a right FAQ. And honestly, you come as a solution provider for your customers. Mm. Google understand that. And then Google will position your website higher compared to the website they don't have or they don't share those type of information to the customer or the visitor. That's, that's a big picture. Yeah. It sounds like uh, Google is a search engine and just like social media platforms, right? They, they are looking at the user and trying to figure out what it is that is relevant for the user. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah, Facebook and, and, and the social media platforms, uh, they go about it a different way than, than search engine. But search engine means if you put a, a certain amount of uh, words into the search bar, what is the most relevant answer to to the to the query sort of but it's, yeah. it's more into it is more um the, when the people landing to your page depend on compared to the other people at other website in industry if people stay on your page longer yeah that's an indication that your content is valuable for them so it's not only putting a couple keywords on the page or fixing a tagline that's that's given mm -hmm. but and the other thing is very important for this year is a website to speed so mm -hmm. you have to make sure, especially for the mobile as a major search for the people these days, you have to make sure your website is mobile friendly mm -hmm. and is fast when it's come to the mobile type of website. So you have to check your website through desktop speed and yeah. the mobile speed. Um, those are the factors also this year for make sure the website is, uh, is in a fast server. So I have, you have client, they go to the, she posting company, I don't know, one ninety nine per month, and they said, oh, I don't have a position. As and it, your website is pretty so low, so you have to fix it or purchase better hosting or faster type of server to increase your, you know, position. So that's a factor also. Got it. Okay, so um, another factor that I've I've uh, looked up that that really matters, and you touched on it, are like number one being being back backlinks right is one of the biggest yeah backlinks criteria Google it's uses. criteria basically is a voting model for the page for Google to understand yeah. how relative your content is and people in industry that they how do they link to you so we have clients that they paid some other companies certain amount of dollars and then they receive a backlink from non relative website. Actually, this backfiring. The backlink means if the website A consider your content valuable and they give you a link to your website, that's a backlink. However, you have to make sure the website A has a proper content. It's known in your industry, is relevant. If you are in the car business, you prefer to receive another backlink from auto parts dealership those are valuable link but if you have a car business or car show and then you have a link from non-relevant backlink yeah and from the con out of the country those are sort of negatively affecting you so sometimes we have to go to google and request to remove some of the backlink that are not relevant to the company uh to the existing website or basically we start requesting or basically put the right content um, on the website and requesting the relevant company to give us a backlink. It's a tedious, is a long-term project, is not happening in one week or two weeks. 
Yeah. But if you do it properly, it's going to show up and improve your position and uh, in the industry and the Google and search engine. Yeah. Okay, so that that's backlinking, which is uh, other websites that link to your website. Correct. And if it's a if there are relevant sites, um, it's going to increase your ranking and and you're going to become relevant. Correct. In that uh, that category, topic yeah. that category. Okay, Correct. perfect. Um, and then once somebody actually comes to your page, it, you touched on it, time on the page, Google tracks how much time somebody's spending exactly. on your, on your website. Yes. And those are factors. So that's the reason they call it content is a king. True. Because if you have a proper content and people enjoy reading it and follow, that makes a difference versus a sales pitch. I'm the best. I'm number one. Right. Uh, because people like get tired of reading those things and but if there is a relevant content if it's like a how to tips question and answer the question that people they talk to you on the phone on a daily basis you write the right answer on your website so people they landing they read the content and they they read the question they read, they read your answer those are the things that's very helpful for in web interactive website so basically as as soon as your website content to interactive website people they come for more news or more information um then we call it you are the it so google loves it and position you higher and better yeah uh, so the it, it, we're kind of in an information age where like information is a almost a commodity right because you, you can search just about anything correct you know, and uh, and get a a good, a decent understanding, at least enough to be dangerous, right? <laughs> <True>. <laughs> at least enough uh, to be dangerous about anything. To, you know, for yeah. my, my industry, tax preparation, your industry, correct, online marketing, you could you could find enough to become dangerous. Yeah, yeah Google convert to the, the encyclopedia of the people. So, uh, used to be accessing to information, you have to pay for it. Right now, the information is free. Right. What to do with it? Is the issue. advice right exactly. that's the difference that's so yeah, yeah that's because in my business that's huge yeah and that's my point is people they come to you to your business uh, to basically buy your experience right they rely on your skills because accessing to accounting information is free these days you can go to a couple google search and everything comes up right but what to do with those information that's what makes it different between you and somebody that is starting a business People, they pay for skills, not for information. Information is free. Um, and that is skillfulness and that experience makes a difference between the companies and you know, success com successful companies and non-successful. So the more experience and the skill you try to transfer to your audience, to your client, that makes a difference in your long term of the business model. Yeah. Um do you think it matters like the type of content that's on your website, like written content versus video content versus images? Um, um, depends. Depend on the industry makes it different. People, unfortunately, they don't have a ten. They don't read anymore. They like to view. Yeah. Some content that when you write makes sense for some type of audience, but the video is number one because it has a higher conversion. People they observe. If you have a quality video regarding the content that works well um, at the same token images it's working for if you are in the say beauty industry it sells if you are in plastic surgery industry they don't image in sell if you have an antique or sort of the product sales that they have a high end margin profit they want is a unique product picture sells depend each content is relevant to different type of market yeah but all of them you have to make sure the quality is there the picture the video the content yes yeah um is it true uh, or as far as you you understand is it true that uh, youtube is like the second largest search engine or second most relevant search engine second yeah to people they Google view search sure uh, the college is the largest university so you can find anything you want like it's good for tutoring training yeah how to tips um and again, if you have a relevant content, if you can share your skill on YouTube, that itself is helping you a lot uh, on the search engine also because you can use that those videos back to your website or vice versa. So YouTube is amazing. Uh, anything you're actually looking for, you can find on YouTube. How to, yeah. yeah how to, to yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I, that, um, 
my son go to the YouTube and repair lots of things in the home, and he's not a plumber or <laughs> 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 so he 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 finds stuff and he fixes his car. He he find new stuff. There is lots of training, coaching, but regular people that. They have a passion about one thing and they do it very well. And the YouTube allows other people to learn from each other. It's a many-to-many -many relationship. So lots of university they put their stuff on the YouTube. So as a courses, as a training, as a tip. So yeah, YouTube is a phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. I think um what about uh like Google Maps? So I I feel like I feel like those three things are are searchable in in Google. It's like Google just the, yeah, Google, the original search, the yeah, YouTube, the yeah. videos, right, and then and then Google Map. <laughs> yeah, Google Map is very, is a very important for service oriented businesses mm -hmm. when they query search for their service in the location. So usually Google Map shows who provide that service on that location. So there is a big fight between all the small businesses in the local area to be shown on a Google Map. Yeah. So Google Map is very important for service-oriented businesses. The Google search itself is important for product sales and service businesses. To gain a position on Google Map is a little different versus the gain a position on actual Google. Uh, usually, if you have a right terms on your name of their business, that helps you to be shown on the Google Map. The number of the reviews you have is going to help you also. And um, that's that's very important for local service provider in a specific city that shows they're showing their business on the Google Map. Yeah. Mm. Okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, what about uh, so it, it's not just good enough to have content on your website, is it? Like it has to be relevant and it has to be original. Correct. That's very important. We deal with a lots of client that they do work with the third party that provide them a free content blog uh, as a part of a service, which is nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that blog, it shares, say, with the number other, of the other number of the people in the same business. So it, from this perspective of the positioning or add value from the Google perspective is none. So if you, have the, if you write a unique content, that makes you a different. You have to be your content is unique, valuable, uh, lengthy enough to absorb the attention at the same token has a picture as a video that's a unique content and that makes it different so sadly some people they copy paste some other people's content <laughs> actually hurting both it doesn't help yeah. none but if uh, my advice to everybody is write their content if you don't have a time or the know-how contact a uh, digital marketing that all they do is content marketing yeah so they provide the content for you and that content after you check post it that has more value versus a content that uh, it shows in 30 other website because there is no value for google to position you based on a content or even the readers you know they, they find the same item somewhere else so um, you make sure your content is unique and your message is unique and that makes you different from the other people in the same industry okay yeah. uh very good, very good information there. Um, so Google's the king of search, is it? Uh, yes, Google is a big gorilla. There is a Bing and Yahoo, uh, based on my understanding, is around probably between 20 to a 17 to 23rd percent of the search goes to the other search engines. Yeah. But by far, Google is the it when it's come to the search. The same model is when it's come to social media facebook is it when it's come to the social media um one of the other things i would like to emphasize is about the reviews and basically how the people they trust the businesses uh, there is a huge shift in the market regarding the businesses that they have a positive review and per relevant reviews to review sites like a google or yelp and um, lots of business they do not understand and, and they do not know what to do with it. Um, reviews makes a huge difference on trust-based relationship between a newcomers to the website and you yeah. as a business owner. So if you have a big pool of the positive or semi-positive review, your position in the search engine and the um, trust-based relationship with the customer will improve you know, hugely. And then you can start selling the product or services. 
uh, review is a major factor when it's come to the sales these days. Just want to emphasize on that so because people they don't. Some people they ask us, "Oh, I don't like this review website. I don't like that review website." And I said, "Doesn't matter. You have to make sure if somebody the issue with them is if somebody give them a bad review, they get very emotional." Right. And, and I tell them, mm, "That's okay. If if you you can respond to the bad review, if the problem." It's you still say, I'm sorry. If the problem is your business model, fix it. But do not ignore it. So make sure that your review is, you are responsive to all the review, good one or bad one. So that's another thing is makes a huge difference in the sales and interaction with the visitors, with the company. Yeah, I think um, it's important for businesses to understand um, in order to sell, quote unquote, sell somebody something or, or you know, get, get them to, to open up their checkbook, you have to be in a position of uh, rapport with them. And r rapport meaning like, you know, like they have to like, know, and trust you almost. And True. when you're doing online marketing and trying to find clients from uh, who are strangers, <laughs> right? They, they don't know you from someone else. They're not being True. referred to you. Like a referral is, is a warm introduction is a lot easier to uh close than something coming from the internet absolutely correct uh, word of mouth by far is a number one uh, referral model or basically receiving a new leads or clients to any business the problem with that there is a not everybody have that networking or the know-how yeah. especially for newcomers to any business so they rely on the internet leads to generate revenue. Um, internet leads comparison to word of mouth, the quality is much less because people, they do not know, know you. The, the, to, to gain that trust, that's the reason review website come and help you. So the way it works, mm -hmm. if 20 people, they say, you are a good man or your business are happy with your ex their experience with your company, the number 21, he or she will contact you right away. Because they call it tribe trust, so everybody's like a tribe. They believe you, so they don't ask too many questions. Yeah. A reverse of it is true. If you have a eighteen bad reviews and two good reviews, your business is gonna hurt. People they don't contact you, but you don't know about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of the course. Pro the, the problem is that if you don't answer to those bad reviews is if these bad reviews usually bad reviews is about your business model is the way people they do business but lots of small business people they get emotional about what's happened in the person who wrote a review yeah and we have to coach them is nothing wrong with that just read it reevaluate it respond to it we call it passive and positive don't get personal if it is about the way you do business evaluate your business model fix it Saying I'm sorry takes you a long way to understand and make you wise business person versus getting mad and you know get personal with the person who wrote a bad review. So majority of the cases that we check the reviews is the issue is uh, the way business operate. Yeah. Uh, hardly we find somebody with very malice and mean mindset to write on a daily basis bad review. There are people like that, but um, in my belief. People, when they say something in a general, if 20, 30 people, they say something is wrong, something is wrong. You have to evaluate and fix it. And that uh, makes your business better. And gradually, you, you're you going to gain some more positive review as your business model is getting better and healthier. So review is actually is like a blood test for your business. So <laughs> it gives you all the facts and numbers sometimes. And it, it gives you the, how the p other people look at you. So there's nothing wrong to have a one or two bad review as soon as you know where it's coming from and it's not impersonal. So that's that's a way I look into it. Yeah. I think uh, reviews or um, customer surveys are a leading indicator as far as where your business business's trajectory is, you know? Exactly. If you, if you have a lot of pissed off clients, you're probably going to start losing money. Uh, well, absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. The, and that's that's a, that's real reality. Uh, we go with a lot of clients. They ask us, "Oh, can you guarantee the quality of the lead?" And I said, "We love to, but <laughs> it's not doable." I mean, even if you advertise in I don't know major channels, CNN, Fox News, 
they can guarantee that you receive a quality client. Yeah. Uh, however, when we advertise dollar by dollar on the search engines versus the review website, usually review website, people they contacting you, they are in the mode of buying the, your service versus asking questions. So mm. if your review is there and if you have a right content, pictures, answering questions, people, they will trust the tribe and they buy your service as far as your review is positive and indicate that, hey, you are a right, right person, right business, and right location, they contact you. And that's a good indicator. And honestly, I use the same reviews website for my business if I'm looking mm -hmm. for some services or product and usually work. Usually uh, when somebody has a lots of positive review, that person is a nice person to work with yeah that's that's a good indicator and m lots of customer they do the same so my my point with lots of a small business or big business make sure respond to your reviews do not ignore them positive one negative one don't assume that nobody reads them that's another biggest mistake that people they have a bad review and ignore it don't ignore it respond to it yeah uh, own it um so when you start talking about reviews i automatically think of of yelp Right, because Yelp is the the biggest review. It, it used to just be for restaurants when it came out, right? Yeah. Was, it, I think it came out probably same time as Instagram came out. Instagram also used to be uh, taking pictures of of, of food and, and, <laughs> and uploading it, right? And then it became cats and all this other crap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you talk Yelp. Uh, sorry, you talk uh, reviews. I think Yelp. Is Yelp the biggest uh, review yeah, website? But, yeah, it's the same thing. When you talk about in the in the US, when you talk about the reviews, everybody remember Yelp as yeah. the major. Uh, Yelp has a lots of pro and you know pro and con people. They have total different opposite side of mindset or opinion when it's come to Yelp. Uh, historically, um, people. Yelp doesn't have a policy as a pay for play. So when you advertise on Yelp, the assumption is if somebody wrote a bad review, Yelp gonna remove it, they don't. The other thing is, is lots of positive or negative review filtered by Yelp crawler or search. And that's another thing's pissed off so many people. They said, oh, I had the 30 reviews and right now only you know 10 of them or 15 of them it shows. Um, but since that's a rule applied to everybody, yeah. so it doesn't matter. The other thing is if you make sure your Yelp page has a fresh content about your business, add pictures, and if somebody requests to talk to you, respond to it fast. If you use a Yelp as a tool and vehicle for um, engage with the client is a very valuable tool. Um, and again, depend on the business makes a huge difference the, lots of restaurant home services it's a day and night for them they're spending money on yelp uh, because it's working the same mindset people the plumber uh, your water heater is leaking yeah you're gonna go to yelp you find local plumber or water heater repairman with a tons of positive review you call the guy right so that's the way it works. And lots of other companies, they jump on the same wagon, like a home advisor. Uh, there are lots of them. They try to collect the reviews and to mimic the same model. Yeah. But by far, Yelp is the, when it's come to the review website, Yelp is the, is the it. So it's the it right now, yeah. Right now. Um, and very, very specifically for um, B2C, right? Business to client. But although it can, it can also work for, for B2B, I, I, you know, I've, I have experience with B2B um, and, and I, I've been uh, actually uh, positively surprised by it, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, it's really well known for, for B2C. It's like it, right. if you're a B2C type of person, you need to be on Yelp. You need yeah. to have a Yelp presence. Exactly. It's for yeah. business to consumer, um, Yelp is doing very well. Uh, for business to business, usually it takes longer. Mm. You need to have a case study on your website. They have to know you. They have to trust you. However, for some cases, even for B2B or business to business client, Yelp is working. And that's my point is, as a digital marketing company or as a consultant, we go to the businesses and evaluate all these factors. And based on 
what does it work for them we come into suggestion suggestion yeah yep so is a yelp is the right channel for you is depend on your what you do so we evaluate all the angles before before come with the number so lots of people they call us and said well what packages do you offer i said i don't know what what do you want what package do you like he said uh i can we cannot throw a number before we understand the business model so lots of question and answer at the beginning help us to come with a plan for their marketing for their online marketing and then depend on the type of business we offer different channel is it worth it you advertise on google or yelp or different directories so that's a big picture that we try to emphasize when we're dealing with the new clients that it's not the packaging is not uh, it's, it's not, not a one size fits all yeah it's not a key and you know one key with one lock you have to have to understand what is your need is whom do you competing with and based on that fact and number and who's your customer yeah. you come with a solution so we tailor it to fit with your model to your business model so that's a big picture but in that regard sometimes yelp is working very well for some people sometimes they don't really need that yelp maybe they have to go to google and that makes a difference where you're spending money. The problem with a lot of business, they, they confuse between the marketing and advertising. So mm. the concept of the advertising to them is tied with a dollar or how much you're spending. But marketing is more going back to your number, to your business model, to your customer. And you get amazed on how many people they do not have the right numbers for their business and they're in business long time and they said okay tell me how much is the cost of the customer accusation or what's the value of the customer and they said hmm that means this is the first time they're thinking about it yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> so we go from that angle it's not just a website or google or bing or yahoo or yelp so as soon as we understand those fact and number we come back with a model that matching with their budget and matching with their vision and that's the reason majority of our clients stay with us for five, seven years. Um, this yeah. is our average life expectancy of the customer with us. So. Okay. Um, what about social media? Is social media necessary uh, to have a, a good online marketing strategy? Uh, absolutely. Uh, depend. For example, if you're a B2B business, uh, LinkedIn, you have to be in LinkedIn. If you are a B2C or business to consumer, LinkedIn and Facebook is going to help you. And again, depend on the industry. For example, for beauty or cosmetic, Instagram and Pinterest will do very well because mm -hmm. it's a picture driven. Uh, Facebook also and LinkedIn also. So this social media is like a different car you drive, depending on what type of service you're asking the car provide for you, you can change the cars. So, um, and the other problem is your content, the same mindset should be fresh, relevant, informative. Um, and that's the reason lots of people, they get tired of, and you have to do this one on the proper time frame. Yeah. You cannot just make a one post in 2018 <laughs> and the other one 2019. Yeah. You have to have a fresh content, relevant. And that's the reason lots of big size or mid size companies, they have a team in house or they come and contact us to provide that service because they can provide the content on a, on a proper time frame. So we do come and help them about the quality content pictures. We post for them and make sure if we're going to boost their post to make sure it is engaged with the right audience. So that's, that's a big picture about social media. Social media, they have to be there and because everybody's in social media these days. Yeah, every well, I mean, everybody's consuming content somewhere, right? So yeah, uh, Facebook by far is around. I think uh, I don't know. Last time I checked, a couple billion people on Facebook is like a whole country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a couple million countries. And anyway, so my point is, you have to be engaged. You cannot just build. To us, a website. Uh, this is not like a book. It's like a magazine. So you have to have with the fresh content on a regular basis. Yeah. So you have the same mindset is applied to your social media. You have to have a fresh content, relevant content. Uh, tell us about what's in, about your business. What's what's news in your company? Uh, what offer do you have? So that engagement makes your client or your potential customer engage with your company. So that's required that you do it on a timely 
manner and then with the proper content. Got it. Um, can you talk a little bit on the differences between like pay per click or like you know uh, sponsored ads um, ver versus organic, and which one's like more effective? Uh, both actually. Uh, natural position on Google takes time, energy, and money. Yeah. To to gain those position and stay there. Um, pay per click is for people they don't. They're looking to gain more position faster. Uh, Pay-per-click through Google or other search engine has two good things. Your budget is defined. Mm, you set your yeah. budget and your location. So if you are a local company in Orange County, California, and your client base is in a 10 to 50 miles radius, you specifically can define that. The problem with pay-per-click is twofold. Number one is in, if you don't pay, you don't have any traffic, it's gone. Sure, Number yeah. two, and the major one is a click fraud means if somebody click on your ad not to the purpose of purchasing and uh, lots of people they don't major these two or they don't major the click fraud so they pay lots of money for yeah. cost of accusation of the new client so what we do we check their ips we check through different software make sure the click is authentic or at least portion of it authentic and then we help the client about their conversion uh, if their ad of the landing page is not relevant to the keywords, we help them to create a proper landing page. Um, but both of them are different tools. Search engine optimization usually deals with a natural position of the website for a specific keyword. Pay per click, you have a bigger spectrum. You can select your keywords, you can select your location, you can select your budget. So, combination of the <laughs> combination of the both is working so yeah for lots of customer we advise both of them to we work on their search engine optimization at the same token we help them with their paper click to make sure they get the both for the keywords that they cannot wait to get the position they get immediate call or immediate interaction with their website mm -hmm. um do you need to focus on one or or do you need to ha ha try a little bit of everything and see what works what 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 is your main is depend on the first question we were going to ask you what is who's your customer where are they coming from yeah and basically we define the budget for you and then we distribute the budget accordingly to make sure you get a little bit of everything for some client that cost per click is so expensive um pi attorneys family law attorneys mm, um, yeah auto car accident attorneys basically we more emphasize in natural search engine position versus a cost per click because it's too expensive for them to carry it in the long run for clients that cost per click is not so expensive we basically blend off both of them at the same time so we offer them natural position plus a cost per click major important things you have to figure out how many customer do you want how fast do you want them mm -hmm. and what's the value of them if you be able to justify those three factors then you can reverse engineer that figure out is it worth it to do the pay-per-click or is it worth it to do the natural search engine optimization so those three factors define which path you have to choose and how, what is your marketing budget yeah yeah so lots of people lots of small businesses they don't they don't have a specific marketing budget but when we ask them how much is your marketing budget, they show their pocket. I don't know. So mm -hmm. we come and help them to distinguish how much should be their marketing budget. And based on that number, we come and tell them, okay, this portion of it should go to the pay per click. The other portion should go to the website, social media, or review website. And if you keep the balance, it's going to work for them. Yeah. I think, um, I think small businesses, uh, like, like you said, most small businesses who have grown organically through word of mouth referrals, um, they don't have a budget set for, mm. for advertising marketing. Um, and it's hard for them to change the, the idea of that they're spending money versus that they're investing money to get a return on, on that investment. Absolutely. You right. Know? Yeah. Because, because, uh, to them it's, um, I have a something we call it small business. They want to lead yesterday. They don't have the money now. 
and they hope after you bring the couple of customers they start paying you. <laughs> 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 but in reality, it's the other way around. They have to. They don't need to spend a penny. They have to bring the piece of paper and the record to figure out some numbers about yeah. how much does it cost to gain a new client, how long that client to stay with them, what is the sales, what percentage of them I have to dedicate for the next sales. If they come with those numbers, the rest of them is not hard things to do. The problem for us at the beginning is a fact finding to question the same question, how much is the value of the customer? And lots of them, they don't know. They just make an assumption. Um, the problem is majority of the businesses, they have a data, but they don't have a information. And the difference is information is something you can make a empirical formula or basically logical pattern for success. Data doesn't mean anything, it's a number. But to, to convert their data to information requires skill. So we have to sit in front of them asking the same question a couple times and then the truth comes out. And based on a fact and number, you can come with a proposal. Because based on your number, right, now, this is the way it works. So as soon as we have the authentic and real number, then we can come with a real proposal that works for them. The problem is finding that number. Uh, and people usually say, I don't have any money. I don't, but they do. But the problem is they do not allocate them properly. So when they allocate the right marketing budget, then yeah, we can we can we can work with us or anybody else. The major issue is they do not allocate the right budget because they cannot major it. So what what are what other things we do for lots of company? We provide the monthly reports for them that indicate how many calls they receive to their business. Yeah. What is the position of their website compared to the month before? And then we sit with them on a monthly basis. They are the local and figure out what's the next step. So that basically walk them through the process. So that's helped them to trust us and understand the model. And that's the reason, one of the other reasons that they stay with us because few other companies, they do this. Majority of them, they charge them a flat fee and then the guy is in a different state and they have no clue what the guy is doing. But ours is crystal clear model. We get engaged with the customer, with our clients. We go with them, talk to them make sure even as far we have a Zoom or Skype on a monthly basis, we talk to them, make sure everybody's on the same page yeah. and we solve problem. That's the key component that I think makes us a different compared to the rest of the digital marketing. Um, if you could you know, give a business owner uh, like one piece of advice, what, what would it be? What would be the, t the top thing as far as you know, um, marketing concern? Talk to your customer. Yeah, <laughs> get feedback. Get the feedback. Talk yeah. to your customer. Don't make an assumption. Uh, ask them question. Uh, ask them about their opinion. Ask them how how do they see you, and ask them survey them. Ask them how they can help you to improve your business. What they see as a problem with your model. There is no single business on earth exists that doesn't need this rejuvenation or basically correction. All the businesses, they need to listen to their customer and they need to understand and look at their business model from perspective of the customer and then be able to be coachable. It means that be able to fix the problem and let the ego goes away. The problem is when we make making money, <laughs> you build ego. the ego, yeah. So it's, and that, that's my point is, the review website helps you, help you to understand that how the other people look at you. Yeah. So if it's something's wrong, don't get personal. Evaluate it. If it's something that they believe is wrong, fix it. And if that is gone, then you don't gonna have a negative review anymore. So, but we have clients sometimes they get so emotional with the reviews and say, "Oh, this guy is bad." So yeah, but read it. Read what 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 he or she is saying. Yeah, are there valid points? Yeah, there that you can and take away and to if it's your if it's true, if yeah. it's true, just say I'm sorry. Fix it. And go forward. Don't get, don't attach with it. Don't engage your ego with the review. Yeah. Look at them from a third party and respond to it passive and positive. If it's, if it's your fault, say sorry and go forward. But people they say oh, I do, but it's very hard for lots of small business to understand. It's not impersonal. It's all business. Um, yeah. And the way you look at the, your business. So my advice is talk to your customer and be coachable.
<laughs> that's a great piece of advice <laughs> um cool we're at uh we're at about 45 minutes all right is there anything else or should, should we wrap it, it up uh yeah. we are here to do helping a small to mid-sized business um please contact us if you have any question concern yeah we Where? are we are Oh, Search Engine Projects uh, is our company is in Anaheim, California. Yep. And you can contact us through email. Uh, is My email is sean at searchranker.com or info at searchengineprojects.com. And you can call at our toll-free number. And uh, we are here as a consultant, not as a salesman. So we're always helping you if, if you have any question. Yeah. All right. Awesome, Sean. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir.